Binx's brew, or Binx sake, as it is more commonly known, has been carefully constructed to be the epitome of a pirate song. Not a real one, mind you, but in the fictional world of Eiichiro Oda's manga One Piece, it certainly is one. Conceptualized by Oda himself and written by the anime music genius Kohei Tanaka, it is intended to strike a similar tone to that of the story of One Piece itself, simultaneous joy and sadness. Depending on the tempo and the instrumentation, it can be sung as a cheerful celebration song, as a nostalgic tune, or even as a somber farewell piece. And despite the manga's overwhelming popularity, as well as the actual song's worldwide recognition, I don't think I have ever seen a stylistic analysis of it, which led me to the conclusion to try it out myself. So, this is my attempt at analysing Binx's Brew as a lyric poem. Starting off with the structure, we can divide the song in this manner. Chorus, four stances, chorus again, two more stances and another chorus at the very end. I should say that I am not familiar with the structure nor its meter myself, and that what we are going to analyse is the Viz Media translation from Japanese into English. The stances have mostly the following syllabic pattern. 7, 7, 13, 7, 7, 13. There is some variation between the English version and the Japanese one. Namely, it's time to ship out Binx's brew, adds one more syllable at the start, switching the meter from trochaic to iambic. And sometimes in the Japanese version, one syllable can be added to the final verse of the stanza, uh, which the English version follows. Compare birds they sing of cheerful things in circles passing by, and so spread your tail from dawn till dusk upon these foamy seas. Lines 1, 2, 4 and 5 of the stanza tend to form a, a trochaic tetrameter, not unlike the one in William Blake's The Tiger. Compare bid farewell to weavers town, say so long to poor renowned, and Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. In both cases, the foot of the meter consists of one stress and then one unstressed syllable. The third and sixth verse are a trochaic heptameter, uh, seven feet, which may be divided by a cesura. The chorus, consisting simply of onomatopoeic pirate laughter, is an exception to that. Its four verses have the same structure, and it goes as follows. The first foot is a trochee, so stressed, unstressed. Then it reverses into an iron in the second foot. Unstressed, stressed. After this, it goes back to a trochee in the third foot, so stressed, unstressed, and finishes off with a spondy, stressed, stressed. As for the rhyming pattern within the stanzas, they usually follow this structure. A, A blank, B, B blank, with the optional internal rhyme within the longer verses. To go over them in detail, in the first stanza we have crew and brew, an assonantal half rhyme. In the fourth and fifth verses, we have tide and wide, a consonantal full rhyme, which coincidentally is also used at the end of the third verse in guide. Additionally, we have internal rhymes in the third and sixth verses, a homoeothaluthan, or grammatical rhyme, in the form of blows and nose, and a partial rhyme of sing and things. In the second stanza, there is a partial rhyme, town and renowned, as well as a full consonantal one, C's and E's. In the sixth verse, there is a full internal rhyme of night and delight. Its equivalent in the third verse is song and long, uh, curiously preceded by another long in the middle of the second line. The third stanza along with the fifth and sixth one gives us the return of the epinephora from the start, gather up all of the crew, it's time to ship up Binx's brew, as well as the full rhyme heads and beds. The third verse has we, eternally, and see as an internal half rhyme, while the sixth one has a partial one in high and flies. The fourth stanza continues that half rhyme in sky and by. Later on you can also see fear and clear, which may be considered a full rhyme in rhotic accents, or a half rhyme if you pronounce it without the rhotic r. Earlier on, blowing, dancing and evening uh, are an example of internal homoeothaluthan. 
the same grammatical rhyme can be seen in the fifth stanza in Passing and Everlasting. In the same verses we have Dream and Seem a full rhyme. Now the third and sixth verses do something more interesting as they mix up the internal rhymes. We have Goodbye and Cry rhyming with Lullaby and Remain rhyming with Again. The last stanza makes a few references uh, to the beginning by using the same para-rhyme or vowel gradation in the phrase Sing a Song as well as the internal rhyme with along. Sing a song, by the way, is an example of a polyptaton, a figure of speech uh, that is the repetition of a certain word in different grammatical forms. Using wide and sees at the end of the longer verses may be yet another reference as both were used in other rhymes before. And finally, the last rhyme we need to mention is done and skeleton, a consonantal partial rhyme, as though the spelling is deceitful, they do in fact use different vowels. Now, another phonetic device we need to watch out for is alliteration, which there is of course plenty of, as it is an English translation. In this category we can name Binks's Brew, Wind and Where, along with The Ways Will Be Our Guide, uh, Say So Long, Sing A Song, Silver Seas and Salty Spray Put Us At Ease, uh, With The Waves and Hoisted High, Somewhere Stormy Sky Steady Skies, as well as Men and May. Later on, Moon and Meat, and lastly, Dawn and Dusk. Speaking of From Dusk Till Dawn, there is a number of stylistic devices in the song that bring the imagery of opposition to mind. In this case, we are talking about antithesis, a figure that can also be found in Day and Night, for instance. Another example of antithesis that can be highlighted is that of stormy winds blowing by in the endless sky, contrasted of course with tomorrow's skies always being clear. Within the area of semantic tropes, we must also name litotes, the euphemic negative expression of a positive statement, such as steady men may never fear, which really means steady men must always be brave, which is in itself a tautology. On the opposite side we have you'll end up a skeleton, a dysphemism, or a periphrasis specifically made less delicate to emphasise the lack of beauty in death. Also, foamy seas are a pleonasm because sea is inherently foamy. Throughout Binks's Brew we can find several examples of hyperbole, such as the endless sky, the voyage never ends, once again steady men may never fear, tomorrow's skies are always clear, and the days that seem everlasting. What also repeats quite often are the imperative phrases directed at the addressee, which we will call apostrophes. Here are some examples. Gather up all of the crew, bid farewell, say so long, uh, sing a song, cross the seas, wave goodbye, don't you cry, uh, you'll end up a skeleton, which is a statement, not an imperative, uh, and spread your tail. And of course, pound your feet and clap your hands. The last two are also examples of parallelism, a syntactic trope. Speaking of repetitions, one cannot omit the aforementioned eponaphoras, uh, and in the same vein, the chorus itself is important to mention as an example of ep ep epiz... Hang on a minute. Okay, I checked, it's, it's pronounced epizexis, apparently. Okay. So, yo ho ho ho, yo ho ho ho, and so on and so forth, is an example of epizexis, as it's just the onomatopoeia of laughter repeated over and over. Oh, and should we divide wave goodbye but don't you cry our memories remain, we get another uh, anaphora with our days are but a passing dream. While no similes can be found in the texts, Bing Saka is rich in metaphors such as... Ugh, this is gonna be a long one. Waves will be our guide, which is a personification of the waves, as a guide. Truth be told, it could also be a reification, if we considered the word guide to be the object guide. But, but I do not think we have seen uh, paper form uh, travel guides in the series itself, unless I am wrong. In which case, say so in the uh, comments below, please. Another metaphor can be found in awe, uh, in itself an archaism, across the ocean's tide. In this case a metonymy, as the sun shines over the whole ocean, not the process it undergoes. 
Birds, they sing of cheerful things, is very much also an instance of personification, as the speaker should have no idea what the birds are singing about, unless they um, ate the whisper whisper fruit, which allows one to talk to animals. But that is beside the point. Another personification is waves of dancing, a figure very similar to which is animization, the metaphorical comparison of something to a living being. In the case of our Jolly Roger flies, it's also a synecdoche, as it's the whole flag that flies, not just the skull and crossbone symbol on it. Meanwhile, challenging the sea is a kind of metonymy, as the pirates do not find themselves challenged by the presence of water itself, but rather the difficult weather and the risk of starvation that comes with it, as well as its dwellers and other pirates in search of the grand treasure of One Piece. Ship beneath us as our bed also functions as a metaphor, with ship as the tenor and bed as its vehicle. In cognitive linguistics, one would say ship is the source domain and the bed the target domain. Uh, perhaps the most overt example of a sentential metaphor is our days are but a passing dream, and another example would be the winds are lullaby. There, I believe this may be all stylistic devices in Bing Sake, or at least all that I have found. If you found my analysis to be lacking, be sure to leave a comment with anything I've missed. Oh, and speaking of lacking, Pirates We is an example of ellipsis, uh, as uh, one would usually say, we are pirates. Um, it is also an example of syntactic inversion. What it is not an example of inversion, however, is the YouTube algorithm, one of the many terrors of the seas of online content. To make sure I don't end up as a skeleton is to like this video from dawn till dusk, share it upon these foamy seas of social media, and uh, join the team of Team ODAR crew by subscribing. Let's make this voyage never ends. Yup!